when we cast magic within Taoism and we put in that infrastructure, that foundation of the talisman, we use the oracle uh, divination with the script, all these integrated patterns that are also integrated from the, the cosmos, from the universe that goes deep into the, the, the imprinted seed of that particular script that is materialized into this talisman, this powerful thing. So when we draw one of these out, it's so layered with in, an immense amount of uh, energy, frequency, vibration, light, information, energy into the very ink. Like when when I draw one of these things up, uh, you, you literally, you, you can barely keep your hand on the paper because there's so much juice going into it. <laughs> The great perfection seems imperfect, yet this world it creates, it's never impaired. The great fullness seems empty, yet this world it creates, it's never lacking. Great truth seems false, great skill seems clumsy. Great eloquence seems like babble. Keep moving and you'll miss the cold. Keep silent and you'll beat the heat. Be tranquil like the rain of spring. Be pure like the sheen of silk. Then the great perfection will be perfect and the great fullness will be full. Ah. Echoing, reverberating, vibrating, all is one, one is all. Let that pierce through your mind. Beyond the beyond. Hear that name echo. Know that name now. Realize the mother is the keeper of all things. The nurture of perfection. Welcome to the consciousness of the way. My divine delectable co-host, Jade. Howdy doody. Hey, you you almost put me out with that one. <laughs> I'm, wow. I'm, I'm trying to come back. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the power of our scripture is mm -hmm. second to none. Every moment is encapsulated, infused with this divine energy. And I'm your humble servant, and Sifu, that was Master Sun Quinn. What another incredible day. Amazing day. Refreshing. Very refreshing. Wow. Cleansing. Cleansing is uh, definitely the beginning of something great. Mm -hmm. You see things, you hear things, you know things. When we talk about symbols, we talk about numbers, we talk about words, how powerful and sacred they are, especially in the uh, ritual of uh, divination within Taoism, uh, you know, dating back thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. And let me just 
let, let me just say 10,000 years as a beginner or more over, why don't we stick to our magical most highest divine number of 9,000 years and up. But uh, you can't deny how much you resonate, how much you vibrate, how much you are magnetized to the very idea. And we spoke, you know, just yesterday or the podcast before, I think it was yesterday or the day before, and we we're talking about um, the inner workings of the magnetism of the earth and, you know, our affinity with the universe, how that is, it, it really is the inner workings of everything that we do, whether it's casting magic, uh, drawing scripture, creating manifestation, you know, witnessing healing. It's happening all the time. And so, you know, looking at the history of Taoism and how it parallels other systems, other, other, you know, um, historic uh, script, you know, we go back to something like the birth of, you know, uh, Chinese um, communication or language, Asian um, communication or language, primarily, you know, how we evolved to, you know, the characters and script that we use today within, um, you know, you know, Mandarin, and before Mandarin it was Cantonese, and it was an evolution of these different characters or the way that it was created within the history of China, moreover, you know, within Taoism, but the seed of it started thousands and thousands of years, right back to, you know, the Yellow Emperor, um, and it, that goes even deeper to the Three Pure Ones, and, you know, it, it, it sort of ripples over into a later realization, you know, 3,000 years BC within, you know, Latsu, you know, logging, transcribing his realization, his, uh, his connection with the universe, and then what it ultimately gave him through uh, a, a combination of working with the Yellow Emperor from, from a, a direct channeling aspect and the interconnection of the universe creating, you know, Lao Tzu's realization and scripting the Tao Te Ching. And just the fact that, that something written that long ago still has such a powerful effect today. Mm -hmm. People resonate with it, whether it's, you know, a quote they read on a wall, whether they find it on a YouTube video, whether they even know it's a Lao Tzu quote, and they go, oh, that, that just hit me. You know, mm -hmm. that, that just got me right here. Mm -hmm. um, just shows how incredible those words are, those teachings, the, that understanding that he had and, and um, was able to, to share. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's... <laughs> with a deeper understanding of the universe as we know it today, um, truly realizing that we are one, all is one, one is all, let that echo, let that echo, let it echo. I'm not even saying let it echo in your mind, just let it echo because this is your mind. This is your consciousness. This is your reality right here, right now. It's all interconnecting. It's all oscillating. We are all one. That's a realization. That's a mic drop right here, right now. And so when I say let it echo, and we talk about the uh, living scripture and the fact that it was a direct seed 
that was transcribed by Latsu's interconnection with the Yellow Emperor and, you know, oversight of the universe and the three pure ones. I mean, it, it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. We talk about where did this, where was this uh, divination realized? Well, it goes even deeper, which, you know, um, comes right back to a script that dates back to or is being recognized as, you know, at least 6,000 years BC. I can tell you, moreover, if I speak to the Yellow Emperor, the Three Pure Ones, it'll go even further. But this was a symbolic, uh, symbolized uh, um, script that would have been reflectant of what they've now uh, identified as a, an oracle uh, bone uh, uh, text or um, how they've discovered this particular uh, uh, script, this oracle bone script, is from when we would use the bones of, of course, you know, an animal, and you would heat them up, and as the bones fractured within um, a fire, the fractures would result in, in a, a symbol that was created, and then you would use that symbol to create the script that was really the first seed of everything that we know of what we now recognize as, you know, a, a, a language that people would refer to as Mandarin today. And that went through um, its realization all the way down back to 6,000 years before BC. And that's just what they can find. That's what they can find. Yeah. Now, <laughs> If I talk directly with the three Purons, the directly with the uh, Yellow Emperor, this goes way beyond that. Mm -hmm. But let's just say we were to just go by what they've, they've scripted, what they've realized and what they've documented. You know, this is, a, you know, the Oracle Bone uh, uh, script goes way back to, you know, 3,000 years B.C. And then, of course... It's actually been documented to be at least six to nine thousand years before that. They don't have enough information. Well, they should come and see me. I'll help them out. Mm -hmm. And understanding that, you know, that's evolved over six or seven different like levels of script that brought us to, you know, the spoken word and characters that they use today in China, which is Mandarin. Yeah, very very powerful. Just just even the the um, the motion of writing it and and or you know uh, etching it or whatever it is the the whole movement mm -hmm. of it just has such a flow. Well, you know, it, it goes deeper with that uh, uh, divination work and what we how how important how embodied the power of a ritual, the power of um, a magical uh, construction that's wrapped up into the ritual, the Taoist ritual that we use. And that divination, that um, uh, oracle bone scripture um, is a text, a, a, a symbol that sort of morphs into what we call talismans. And those talismans are you know way deeper and so understanding that how they were evolved was from this reflection of the bone fractures of you know bones that were cooked and then they were like cracked and then the the um the oracle of that particular uh generation uh would then take those those uh symbols and translate them into an understanding of what they would uh, realize so let, let's say something a little bit more fast forward that someone could understand or recognize would be very symbolic of like um, using the I Ching um, uh, moreover tau, uh, you know uh, uh, tarot cards um, symbols and images 
that can be translated into a, a divination, a direct access to a higher frequency energy vibration. So if you're not getting a direct source access and you're letting that resonate through your, your physical body, you're able to translate it, that into a message. That's how these guys would do it. And so it's not, you know, when you're casting magic and you're constructing specific rituals, especially within, you know, a talisman, you have to understand that this is all reflectant on, you know, the, the constellations, it's reflected on star patterns, and then you go even deeper when you get direct source information like the Yellow Emperor, Latsu, uh, Jean Daling, um, direct access to the three purons, just the way we do, the way I do every day. I talk to them, get direct source information. You can go way deeper, way deeper, because you get a, you get a complete understanding and we will roll this information out for people to then make reference to. And then there's no speculation of, you know, what, what is or what was. And it will be a full realization for a lot of people that you can now have a greater understanding of this. And so, you know, we talk about symbols. We talk about numbers. We talk about letters. And, you know, people get very excited when you've discovered a mastery like Nigong or Qigong, they're so powerful, so ancient. And so these ancient internal alchemy practices that we speak of, that we integrate into our very app, the Way 126 experience, a visual audible experience, creating a kinesthetic response, which is an, a validator go time. That's that feeling that you get and your brain instantly activates a gamma frequency, highly conscious, instantly activates theta. You are pliable and conscious at the same time and you're able to operate that way. You're able to generate and create, manifest, heal, whatever. That's the go time or moreover, something close to a 5D reality. But you know, mastering the cells Mastering the energy, which is the Nigong and Qigong combo, mind and, and respiration is that, that perfect harmony that you become the master keeper creator of your reality. And that's what gets people so excited. So then we do the divination, we get into the rituals, we get into all the um, incantations, the talismans that da Taoists use. You know, all bets are off, man. Uh, we got 30 years in this natural born life as as Taoist experts, Taoist master. I've been teaching this stuff a long time. It's very powerful when you understand it, how to operate it, how to infuse and imprint. And this is where we get into the universe. And so, you know, it's a it's a it's an interesting thing. I mean, Jade and I were having this conversation, especially about physical tattoos. This is a an interesting place to go because it's been so popular. It's been very popular in the better part of this, the beginning of a new century. In the last 20 years, I feel like it's gone absolutely nuts. Like people yeah. are just like, you wake up and one day you're talking to John down the street Who's who's a he's pretty vanilla. Who's that hasn't done much with his life. Next minute, he looks like Takashi six nine, and and you can barely see a, a stretch of 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 bare skin on his face because he tattooed you know the psycho circus all over his forehead. And he's like, I just had an epiphany. I just felt like doing it. I was like, Wow, you really have woken up to who you feel like you really are. And it's like, hey, and it's an expression of how they feel. Yet, you know, you know, before 2000, that was very, very clear. That type of symbolic, you know, face tattoos were, were indigenous to something that would be very ancient. Like you, you could go to, you know, specific parts of the world, um, especially Native Americans, American Indians or, um, you know, moreover Australia, um, native Aboriginals or moreover New Zealand, native Maoris and so on and so forth. You go to, uh, uh, you know, 
the islands, Hawaii. Yeah, Samoa. Samoans. And they have these beautiful um, full body tattoos that are not just symbolic. They're embodied in the very, the, the how rich their heritage is and what it means to them and what it does to them when they infuse their body with these symbols, with these letters, with these numbers that go into their flesh and blood. It's a whole nother level. And as we've spoken about this, this is not just like, you know, I got bored one night, I drank a bottle of whiskey, woke up with, you know, a couple of teardrops on the side of my face. No, you're, you're talking about people that are taking their rich, um, historic um, um, ancient. rituals, ancient indigenous rituals, and they're not just doing it for something to do. This is their history. Yeah. This is part of who they are. It's part of their lineage, and it has absolute reference and relevance to who they are today, and that, moreover, goes deeper into the understanding of... Um, the infusing of the symbols, the numbers, the words into the very DNA strand, which I was just talking earlier today with someone about, and understanding that, you know, that deciphering of that information and how integrated that is, and it's all relevant. Remember, you know, we were speaking on the, the DNA stra strand and how it was being interpreted by a specific physicist that was able to use the periodic table to create an actual message and translate it into English. And that particular message um, is very powerful. I must say, though, if you understand anything to do with the structure of, you know, the field in of itself and how you, everything is wave, everything is wave, everything, what does that mean? Everything is light, everything is wave. And that means that everything is being constructed, deconstructed, instantaneous with your attention, intention, creating wave to matter to particle instantaneously this is the very core of who you are and realizing real time consciousness is everything meaning all of a sudden the switch goes off you have come to this realization you are now one with everything that means your attention intention wherever your eyes go your imagination goes the energy flows creating a wave to matter to particle you know what I'm saying, all of a sudden you have a realization. So if you think that DNA strand that was decoded by somebody back in the 90s, or might have been 2000s, in any case, using the periodic table to create an actual message wasn't that of whatever they were in relation to the epigenetic model being you are a product of your environment, your thoughts change your reality, you can switch on and off your gene expression with your thoughts alone, which we integrate into our app, Way 126 experience, that you are surely mistaken because you can affect by your mental emotional state the expression of your DNA. So what does that mean? It means that under everything is light, everything is frequency, everything is energy. Energy, frequency, vibration, light, information, energy. Two or one, six a dozen, six of one thing, half a dozen of the other, all encompassing all the same. So that means that you are able to alter the very core and essence of who you are. What does that mean on a deeper level? It's even been validated and verified that one little gram enough to fit on your fingernail of DNA can hold up to seven terab 700, let me repeat that one more time, 700 terabytes of information. I mean, you're going to put these chip companies out of business right up in here. <laughs> 700 terabytes of information on one strand of DNA, enough to fit on your fingernail. Let's repeat this one more time. You have that inside your very essence at a subatomic level. That's going on. You are just one big battery pack. You are one big information center that is taking in information, energy, frequency, vibration instantaneously. It's happening. Mm -hmm. And so understanding that, you have a whole new ball game. So where do you go with that knowing that you're just one big memory pack 
And so that is altering the systems that we talk within um, the physical body that we speak of, that the yellow emperor uh, realized and was able to to translate into what we know today as traditional Chinese medicine was these energy pathways, uh, moreover, the, the neurology that you speak of within the physical body that is then layered with an energetic component, which is an energetic level, a mirroring effect that you have an energetic anatomy that moves light information and energy through the very essence of who you are from a physical level to an energetic level to a spiritual level you are just one big battery pack of information energy frequency vibration it's, it's mind-blowing to me every day i wake up and i'm just grateful i just thank the Tao. i thank the three pure ones for this vehicle this tuning fork that we use to have our human being experience it's it's wild i think it's really crazy with kids too especially like um when we when we've had i notice you talk about like the dna and everything and like when we're in that really like newborn stage of like having a son or something and you'll hold him and i'll just look at both of you and he'll be like two months old and i'm like how is he already making the same facial mm -hmm. expressions that you make or the like echoing of that. yeah or like or like little mannerisms and you're like wait how is he even learning like how I mean, a three months old how has he learned like identical mannerisms and if if you're a that, parent, I, that i've been that i've been sharpening and nurturing for a lifetime exactly and like he and like a, any parent out there has had this experience mm -hmm. where you're like you know yeah you look and you're like not only do you look like this person but like the man like the littlest mannerisms the squinting the this the yawning the the way you move your eyebrows whatever and it, and this little baby has this like replicating thing of it and you're just it's it's mind-blowing because you're like wow how much is really you know, it's not just these, I think when you think of DNA, you think of like these physical features, you know, what color hair, what right. color eyes, right. what color, um, you know, skin do you have all of these things, but it's like, no, it's so much deeper than that. There's, there's so much more ingrained that I don't even think we've scratched a surface on. Right, right, right. No, 1000%. I mean, and that's really the deeper understanding of that, um, Oracle bone, uh, uh scripture and how symbolic and how powerful symbols are to us as Taoists and where we go with that integrated into talismans, which is, you know, the basically the core foundation of all Taoist magic is, is symbols. I mean, it does it in symbols and script and they all started nine eighteen thousand who knows uh well i can find out i'll i'll keep you updated don't worry but let's <laughs> just say let's yeah let's just say <laughs> it started about nine thousand years ago and moreover and realize that you know just as jade is talking about you look at this child that is literally being you know physically exposed to the world for a fraction of a second and they look identical to you and they have mannerisms that are identical to you because that DNA is being shifting and altered throughout the whole experience. Understand this, know this to be true. When you conceive the fusing of yin and yang energy, creating the conception, realization, the evolution the ground zero for the birth of a living being, you must realize that whatever is taking place in that moment of conception between the yin and yang energy is infused into the very core that realizes that the, the spiritual body that really on a much deeper level within Taoism, your children choose you, you don't choose them. What? What, Sifa? What are you talking? What? What are you talking about? Oh yes, a much deeper understanding of this 
that th they come in as your teachers and they find you and they go, I want this mommy and daddy. And then I'm coming in here to teach you something greater. Oh, yes. Yeah, sit with that, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. Realize the profound rippling effect of that. And that's why, you know, what what do we talk about? What is it? I mean, generally, that's been morphed into, you know, um, a, a simple practice of, you know, new age pregnancy or, you know, moving through the, 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 the process of, you know, conception to birth. What an interesting number, nine months. You can't make this stuff up. What's going <laughs> on? That it would take nine months. What an interesting number. That that number nine reflected on the cycle that is necessary from conception to birth of a living being Holy moly, you can't make this stuff up, Sifu. <laughs> and so, you know, it's been it's been something in the last probably 30 or 40 years that's been quite clear that, you know, you want to, I wouldn't even say 30, I would say 20 or 30 years. Within Taoism, we've known this forever. But, you know, when you are, are doing the cycle of pregnancy and you have the mother that's, that's, bearing the child and you know carrying the child to birth because i can't see how anyone else could but anyway we won't even go there the realization that you know while the child is slowly growing and developing through that nine month cycle till birth you speak to it i speak to all my children they hear me in the womb. They hear me. My wife and I will have conversations with our children directly. And, you know, if you can connect with them and you have a sensory perception that is heightened, you can see them. You can have these deeper conversations of understanding. And I've done that with all my children. All of them. You know, I even, you know, worked out with one child, um, to move his day of birth so that it wouldn't coincide with mine. <laughs> That's how powerful that interconnection is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we both get to celebrate the same month, but it's not on the same day. And that was kind of my selfish manifestation that I then realized and went, oh, no, that's wrong. And then I had a conversation with him and he was like, ah, oh, all right, Dad, we can, we can work it out. Well, I'll move it a couple of days later than your birthday, so then we both get to celebrate the birthday, at, you know, of you know the same value. It should be it should be individual. It should be honoured. It should be appreciated and valued the same. Not just like oh, you're both on the same day. Just kind of wipe it off. It's a wipeout. No, it'd be like being born on Christmas Day. It's a it's a tough one. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you know that integration of the DNA. Mm -hmm. And so we get back to how powerful and symbolic, you know, symbolic or symbols are, you know, and that creation was, you know, a, a system of communication or, you know, when that was conceived 6,000, 9,000 years ago uh, through the integration of the Yellow Emperor and... Um, the universe, moreover, also the three pure ones, giving him complete guidance of how to structure this using symbols, as it was a, it was a reference that that bone oracle um, uh, script was being used to create a log, or a, or a um, a dated sort of like history lesson of everything that was perceived and conceived at that particular moment. That was the whole point of it, to log a script of history as we know it. And a lot of it has been lost and we have to find it again. You know, they would use specific, the reason we use bone oracles is because it, it lasts the test of time. Yeah. You, you, if you put a, you know, and moreover, you know, that was the power of, how in tune the yellow emperor was with the universe and the three pure ones was he was able to create this 
this script that was a a a ledger for you know documenting history and it was also the foundation and basis of a, you know um language an understanding of you know what that meant because there were so many variations over the history of of china in in what those scripts sort of morphed into and finally something that was more um related to you know being able to understand communicate um you know the the language of of you know mandarin to this day and then the pinyin system so you're able to you know write it down and it makes sense within sort of um a, a sort of a, a an english translation which you know i never understood english to be honest with you, mm-hmm. you know, i've always gravitated to symbols yeah because really that's what you know mandarin or the other variations of the script that dated back to the yellow emperor there was six or eight of them or maybe nine what are the chances of that but in any case you got to mandarin today and everything is so simplistic is that you know you have a symbol and it you know it's it's relevant to what it is that you're looking at not this you know bastardized variation that english is that we, you know we really have taken so many variables from all different types of languages and created what we call english today which is sort of like plagiarizing a bunch of other systems well it's still it's still fairly new mm. when you compare it to like you know 10,000 years ago i mean english is probably what 500 years old maybe a little yeah, bit yeah i mean more. i you know I mean, I, it's still very infant in that ancient standpoint yeah yeah but i mean you make such a good point about symbols that you know even looking at it today in modern day with just branding it's right. like when you look at your computer it doesn't have a name on it. Right. It has a symbol on it. Right, right. It has an apple or it has a, a little so powerful. a little Intel chip right, or right. thing or, or a picture. Right. You know what I mean? And it, it's like, you know, when you look at your shoes, they don't have a name on it. They have a symbol on right. it. Right, yeah, that's so powerful. You know, they, the branding nowadays is, is a symbol. Mm-hmm. If you are a brand, you are a picture mm-hmm. where, you know, even driving past like a Target... It doesn't even say the word anymore. It just has a little circle with the little dot oh, in it. And yep. everyone knows that's where I'm yeah. going. And it, it is. It's kind of interesting how we're so ingrained with that, yet people kind of take it for granted or almost right. don't even realize that, like, we are attracted to symbols right. versus actual, like, words Words, yeah because it's so new i mean that the symbols are integrated Mm -hmm. into our dna yes and the numbers and the letters the letters would be a more recent integration yet we morph to the universe so all is one one is all and we morph to the living scripture that we reference the tao te ching is and what is the symbolism of that sifu what does that really mean well the universe is alive Mm -hmm. So it's always pulsating, reverberating, oscillating. It's right here, right now, at all times, every second of every minute of every hour, it's doing this. And all you got to do is ride the wave, baby. Mm -hmm. You want that manifestation. You want that magic. You want that healing. And so, you know, just like our, our symbol, our logo, the way the way and then variations of that the way 126 people are like oh the way why does that seem so familiar to me and, and you your logo kind of looks like a yin yang <laughs> oh my goodness and you know that's a universal thing that mm-hmm. literally i kid you not i could walk down the street and i at a nine out of ten people would be able to tell me what they understand what a yin and yang is well if you show them like a cross 
most people could say, oh yeah, or like a Star of David right. or something. Most people could say, oh yeah, that's that's this, and it's like, are you that religion? No. How do you know that? I just I, do. Exactly. I, I just do. I know it. Or or and, you know what I mean? And it's that gets infused into their DNA, instantly. brought forward into this reincarnation, and they operate in this. That's why we always speak on it. We know it. Mm -hmm. Let it be true. Let it ring. Let it reverberate in your very essence right now. If you have to learn it, you do not know it. If you know it, you do not have to learn it. Booyah. It's here for you right here, right now. You are experiencing it. You are having an epiphany. You having a realization of what Jade and I are speaking on. Does it get any more clear than that? Mm -mm. And that's part of how powerful symbols are and how powerful they are for Taoists and for um, ancient Chinese uh, script dating all the way back into, you know, 9,000 years, well before anything dated in parallel to some people that claim they were the inner workings of the existence of time. That's questionable. And listen, we can go, we can go, we can go into depth. I would love to. I want to, I want that realization. We all have our own teams. We all run with it, but they're all collective. When, when you start to parallel the, the, the realization for each system, it's kind of mind blowing. Yeah. Well, you th you think about you know just the Taoist symbols and how prevalent those were. Then you think of you know Egyptian symbols and you know they would you know all over the walls write these stories, these the you know. ethics, the morals, all of the right. the living scripture. You know they would etch it. You think about even like Mayans how they'd carve it into their temples or Aztecs, you know, and that, and that culture too, symbols were so, I mean, I think they would even like put it on their bodies or. Well, that, I mean, that, that's what we speak of with the tattoos, yeah, the you tattoos know, the Aztecs, and, and the, the, gods uh, the American and the Indians, thing. you know, um, the, the, the Samoans, the, the Maoris, the Aboriginals, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all these in, indigenous sort of like, uh, um, uh, cultures mm -hmm. have these integrated systems and it and it comes back to the core of symbols so the oracle uh, bone divination uh, script is so powerful so important to uh, the inner workings and the architecture of Taoist um, magic and you know how we you know create the the energetic components of like a talisman mm-hmm all bits are off. So then we get back to that whole thing. So you integrate a tattoo on your body. I think it's beautiful. I would I would just suggest this being my business for many lifetimes before this and an un, a deep seated understanding of this stuff that I would just I would the only thing I would suggest to you and that's why it, within the Chinese culture within the Taoist culture you don't see Taoists with tattoos because we understand how powerful those symbols are. And so you, you need to be dead on accurate as what you want on your flesh and blood because that will replicate and ripple into your very DNA, the core, the essence of who you are at a subatomic level. So understand this, know this to be true. We go from a photon all the way up to a cell. The microcosms of the rippling effects of that within what we have defined as the Planck field, moreover, the plasma that is realized into the 50 trillion cells that are the flesh and blood before our very eyes that we create the maestro of within the cognitive spark, within our, what we believe is our mind, which is as our projector creating uh, attention, intention, being able to direct that energy in any which way we choose to, and that is then realized into a manifestation, magic healing. My goodness, that's powerful stuff. It's reverberating through the very essence of core of everything that I can imagine because once you acknowledge that consciousness and know that to be true, you are everything. That means you get access instantaneously to it all. And so we talk about dimensions. We talk about that's a shift of your consciousness. We talk about 5D reality. We use that as a pinnacle turning point because it's sort of like 
the jump off from what you consider 3D into collapsing time and space and having it realized as a pliable level of realization so that you can create magic healing manifestation in this 3D reality. And until you actually have that realized, because everyone has access to it, everyone, you look out there and it looks back at you, as the Jade Emperor has spoken of many times before, look out into the universe and realize all is one, one is all. Let that echo in your mind. Let that reverberate through your very essence, the core of who you are. You are abundant, timeless, endless, limitless, infinite, the truth to everything. Booyah! Doesn't get any more profound than that. No. So, so yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, no, no, just, just piggybacking off of that. Um, it is, it is important to... And I think that's why you do have people who either feel really connected to their tattoos and like, I love them. And then people who go, oh, why did I get that? <laughs> you know, the okay. buyers, that kind of buyers, the buyer's, buyers remorse. remorse of like, right. oh, you and know. And everything, everything has a place and a purpose. So I realized this, people. Right. Whether you, you, know, you had a, a bottle of Jack and you woke up with, I love Bobby on my butt cheek, <laughs> you, you came to that realization for many different reasons that leveled you to a certain place where it was materialized into your reality. So everything happens for a reason. And so, you know, that classic scene from that movie, uh, Hangover, where that, it, that guy wakes up in a hotel room and he's literally, um, you know, uh, you know, he's got dry mouth, and he realizes that he ripped one of his own teeth out with a oh, pair yeah. of pliers, and then he turns over, and the whole audience just starts just rippling with laughter, as we just realized before he has that he tattooed half his face with, you know, Mike Tyson's greatest hits. So all of a sudden, he's got a rip tattoo. He's got a face tattoo, and then just to top it off, he didn't have enough of a bender to realize that. He goes to go for his morning tinkle and opens the door, and he's gre gre greeted with like a great white tiger or something of that nature. Yeah. I think in the actual theme of the movie, they actually went to Mike Tyson's house, stole his tiger, yeah. and, and it ended up in their hotel room. It's like you can't write a script like that. It's hilarious. Mm -hmm. But the truth be known understanding that you know when you put these these symbols i would suggest that's all i'm saying do a little bit more connect with your truth teller and have that determine what is the most appropriate thing for you what do you value more than anything and it will materialize in a supercharge like you've never seen before that will let you know I'm home, this is perfect for me, and this will morph into something even greater because when we cast magic within Taoism and we put in that infrastructure, that foundation of the talisman, we use the oracle uh, divination with the script, all these integrated um, um, patterns that are also integrated from the, the cosmos, from the universe, that goes deep into the, the, the imprinted seed of that particular script that is materialized into this talisman, this powerful thing. So when we draw one of these out, it's so layered with in, an immense amount of uh, energy, frequency, vibration, light, information, energy, into the very ink. Like when, when I draw one of these things up, uh, you, you literally... You, you can barely keep your hand on the paper because there's so much juice going into it because we are, we are calling on all the past generations for thousands of years, thousands, millions of Taoists that have implemented this incredible, powerful ritual and magic into their very essence. So that's drawn all the way into this paper. And I mean, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, as the audience, as Jade and I are experiencing the very essence of that, it's, it's, it's so intoxicating, I can barely keep my head straight because there's so much juice coming from it. And this realization is key. 
So when you come to understand that, I mean, it's so potent. And so that will be taking place knowing that you are the field. Whether you are acknowledging that on a consciousness level or not, everything is rippling and having an effect right down to the core of that black hole energy that's integrated into a photon on a subatomic level. It's there is no space, there is no distance. Understand this, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. It is all filled with this black hole energy. And once you have that realization that you are on, and it's just a matter of flipping a switch, then your attention, intention is instantaneously translated, transmuted into magic, manifestation, and healing realized. Yeah, and I, and I do... I do think that, you know, a lot of people tend to um, like to get tattoos for like in memory of or like feel more connected to um, your lineage, whether maybe you lost someone or, um, you know, whoever, whoever they may be, a lot of people do. And and that that in itself is I want to know they're there all the time always with me and Mm -hmm. it's like i think that's an amazing thing Mm -hmm. that that gives them such a sense of maybe closure or healing or remembrance because it is it's literally when you're tattooing that on you it is ingraining into your dna that symbol that that picture that face that whatever the that saying that uh um, date, right, right. number, and, whatever, whatever it may be. And, and that interconnection, you know, um, I was just speaking to a subscriber that literally um, was mourning the loss of their animal and they had a greater understanding as to what took place with their, uh, in, you know, the, their their relationship with that animal and then you know when you understand the construct of what a, what an animal represents in your 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 human being experience it's a vehicle it's an actual vehicle to remind you to to reset yourself as a human being and connect with humanity and find this uh, uh, frequency we speak of which is unconditional mm-hmm. love and that is deep rooted within the best the very essence of what you know an animal is representative especially in relation to the 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 um the connection with a human being uh, i.e a pet per se and so the the animal lives in the present moment it's not like human beings that sit back and go you know john smith you know gave me a dirty look last week so when i see him next time I'm going to tell him to go F himself. <laughs> Animals are not living in the past. They're not li- living in the future. They're living in the present moment, which is the most profound place to be. And that culmination of that is how you come to that realization of magic manifestation and healing is when you can operate in that 5D reality to to create manifestation, to create healing, to create magic, the collapsing of time and space. You now, you're operating like that as a sentient being, as a, an animal. And, you know, um, this particular person um, was going through a morning system, but they also were so finely tuning themselves that they created this incredible miracle by using the Way 126. They were able to align their energetic body, the first nine um, energy centers, and not soon after they started using it, synchronizing their energy centers, energy frequency vibration, what takes place when you are connected with the earth and the universe realized as the field, but because it's a visual audible experience creating a kinesthetic charge, the key is you don't have to think about it. You just are. What does that mean, Sifu? Well, you're just present. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, that means that there is nothing to speak on it just is what it is. That means that you get that supercharge from the way 126 and you shoot out that magic, that healing, that um, manifestation. Because guess what? You are the field. That's that realization. Oscillating, vibrating, 
uh, um, cultivating, and that activates the brainwave. That activates the very synchronicity, the frequency of that particular Hertz uh, signature that makes it possible for you to stay in the flow as we speak on. And so this person was in the flow and not thinking, just feeling, or not thinking but knowing. And by doing that without putting their attention to specifically stuff, and this is a mistake that takes place and why the way 126 is so powerful is you don't have to think about it. Once you feel it, it's go time. And that's what we keep reiterating and you realize with this this particular uh, app is all of the architecture is there. You're, you're being infused with Nigong and Qigong, uh, 11 herbs and spices, propriety, Taoist, ancient Taoist practices that are integrated into the very essence of this app that uses the fundamentals of quantum physics and epigenetics so, so that you are realized in your your embodiment of this that gives you the go time as the field, that feeling. And so this person was able to heal themselves from a physical ailment they've been dealing with for decades. As far as I know, that might, might be less than that. But let's just say for many, many years, and they healed themselves. Boom. I mean, oh, Sifu, how did they do that? Easily. They are the field. And because they were resonating so much with how they felt, they didn't get into a compartmentalized, you know, I got to think about this, I got to do that. Uh, I am the field. What's my value system? Bloody blah, 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 blah. Who's my identity? Bloody blah, blah. None of that. It's not important. Once you feel it, it's go time, it's on. And so they went one step higher, their level of consciousness, where they didn't even. They weren't even focusing on their healing, their physical healing. They weren't focusing on their animal. But their animal, which was given this terminal um, uh, diagnosis by their vet, was lived a whole nother six or eight months that they were supposed to, you know, they were recommended to put this, per, this animal down. And they never did because they realized that, you know, in the true essence of who they are, you don't want to ever take the life of another living being, ever. Not with intention, ever. And so they were able to have this realize in their, in their experience. And profound it was, beyond profound it was. And um, so they healed themselves. <laughs> I mean, they were blown away. I'm, I'm always beside myself with excitement and gratitude to the Tao, to the three Purons, witnessing the realization that someone has when they're connected with their true source self. That's go time. That's what, that's what gets me all fuzzy and excited inside. And so does Jade is when people come to realize how powerful they are. Mm -hmm. They're second to none. They are oneness. They are singular. They are all. So they healed themselves and then they healed their animal. And extended the life of their animal a, another six or eight months. Now, you know, uh, it was very sad and unfortunate. Unfortunately, uh, ultimately, their, their, their animal passed away. And they were extremely sad and very heavy-hearted and absolutely understandable. These are emotions that were infused. But most people tend to l lean on um, what they've lost. Not the experience, the gain, um, the experience of that particular living being enriching their very essence of what who they are and what they experience in their lifetime. They they tend to lean on the mourning and loss of this the the physical. And so we we had a, a deeper conversation, and I said, you you know, this animal's in your field right now, and it's translated crossed over, come back as pure source energy. So it's now your, um, and we can go into understanding these things, but basically it's now your, um, your, your guide. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a direct, direct tap to source information. And so this person was like, excuse me, what are you talking about? What? And, and they were so excited and happy that, and it's like, well, well how, how do I do that? I said, it's quite simple. You leave me now. You go and you do your thing. Find a quiet spot. Close your eyes. 
and call that energy in. And it will materialize instantaneously. It will validate it by your very tuning fork. Your physical body will give you that bum bum. The feeling. The feeling. And then, you know, they, they got a little distracted like, yeah, but now I was getting all these, you know, basically it was telling me everything that I would want to hear and all that. I'm like, you are getting direct source information from that mm -hmm. spirit and the energy and you are translating it into a message. And, you know, this is a sense that you generate that you have and you always have, but you don't realize is you're hearing this stuff in your mind without sound what and most of the time it's it's translated with symbols yes so like you know every time i eat this food it makes me think of my grandma because she used to make this for me yes. that's a symbol every time i i go to the beach and i see the sunset it reminds me of you know when i was a kid that's a symbol. You know, every time I drive down this street, it's it's I, uh, the name of, of my dad, and I know he's driving with me. It's a symbol. I mean, th that's how we interpret all of these messages right. Right. as these super powerful symbols. Right. And moreover, depending upon how you tune your sensory perception, you'll get direct information mm -hmm. And you will get a message that is very loud and clear, whether it's a sound that you can hear an actual tonal voice or a sound that you hear in your mind that has no sound. And so this person was like, well, they told me all this stuff. And I said, and you're here to validate that? And they're like, yeah, is that? I'm like, 1,000%. You directly did your first channeling, 101, blammo, bammo, it took place and they were still immersed a lot in their emotional state, but they did understand how powerful they just, they accessed it, source energy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They're all powerful. They're one with the universe. They are the universe. You either feel the field is you. My goodness, if I say that one more time, I might turn into a field <laughs> of daisies because that's you know sunflowers are one of my favorite that's also relevant to supreme uh, purity and that's a whole nother story but in any case my goodness understanding these things and so i was just so grateful to bear witness to their realization their level up their ascension into a higher frequency to obtain this information instantaneously Mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. Mind-blower. And you see, we have these type of like um, epiphanies all day long with our users. They get so excited and they, they level up because this app is not just, um, you know, blowing your mind and giving you the ability to master your, mental, your emotional state, master the state you're in you are getting a whole heap of other things that are integrated into it because you're, you're, you're dialing in and synchronizing your energy centers. And with that comes an emotion and a virtue, and, and that's a rippling effect out into the very essence of who you are on a DNA level, on a subatomic level. We talked about how powerful it is. Guess what? You have one gram of DNA. Within that one gram of DNA is 700 terabytes of information. Splitting hairs. 770, 52, 97, 1 billion, you are a walking energy battery um, information. Basically, you, the internet ain't got nothing on you. AI, AI ain't got nothing on you. You are this ancient high-tech tool that commands the ability to utilize this at will. And once you have that realization, the power within you is absolutely undeniable and off the hizzle to a whole nother level, a whole nother frequency, a whole nother realization. Blammo. Yeah, it's, it's just like anything. I mean, it's like any, any hobby or any sport. It's like, you know, you look at like a, a skateboarder and it's like the, 
they practice a trick, they keep missing it. They practice, they keep missing it, but then they hit it that first time and they're like, got it. And that got it is the ebb and flow yep. of the universe, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, you got it. Jane. And then, and then they go, oh, I got this. Okay. I want to do this trick now, or I want to drop in a half pipe or I want to do. And then once you hit that feeling, you go, yes, I got it. And then you replicate it and then you go, okay, what's the next thing I want to do? I want to do this over here. Okay, what's the next thing I want to do? I want to do this over here. And once it becomes realized, right, it's, right. And you, as, you can't, as you like to always say, you can't unsee it. Once, once you, you see it, you what, cannot see or it. Or once you it, feel it, you, you can't unfeel it. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And as one of my favorite bands from the 70s would be quoted on, it's more than a feeling. <laughs> And it really is more than a feeling because mm -hmm. when you understand, I didn't even know I had that within me. It's, <laughs> it's almost like I'm like a fine wine. <laughs> the more I stretch myself out in my physical like uh, existence, I come to realize I have these tuned like realizations of I had no idea. I mean, that I even had it within me. It's more than a feeling. Mm, see, you're, Ooh, get, you're getting the Ooh. realization right oh, now. Oh, I'm getting a realization, all right. Uh -huh. I, I'm down with it. <laughs> but understand this, know this to be true. That power is within you and it's instantaneous. Mm -hmm. And and so what Jade is referencing is that ebb and flow. When we speak on it, you want a, you want a profound manifestation video, go to the one on YouTube. It will give you a step-by-step -step how to hook into that ebb and flow. And then moreover, if you want to master that particular ebb and flow, that kinesthetic charge, then you go and you use the Way 126 and you use the app and you level up instantaneously getting access because... Us speaking on us, uh, um, um, other users speaking on it, it doesn't mean anything. I could get 3,000 people to talk to you about how profound the app is, but until you experience it, until you validate it, your truth is the only truth that's important, the only truth you need to be concerned with, and you will come to that realization because the second you hit play, it's five pina coladas, full body massage, 10 days in the Bahamas, blammo, and you go, holy moly, how is that possible? How do I get to harness these 50 trillion cells that have 0 0.07 millivolts of electricity that have 50 trillion atoms within each cell. And it just goes on and on and on. We go right down, right down, right down, all the way down to that subatomic particle. Now, and they're all interconnected with this Planck field. Moreover, the plasma that is the sheath that's interconnected with this black hole energy mm -hmm. that is a vortex of the eye within the storm, the stillness that we call the Wu Ji, that is between the breath in and the breath out, yin and yang, is the stillness, the Wu Ji, the entry point, the access to the oneness that is the Tao. And how do you access that? Wu Wei, effortless action, baby, effortless effort. That's how we get realized as Taoists. That's how we get realized. Accept and allow, and all will be realized. When you accept you know nothing, you know everything, let that be true. Let that echo in your mind that you do not have, because all thoughts of your mind are not yours. You always laugh, because I always, I, always, I always think in my head, oh, I wish there was like five of me. So I could get five, five things done all at once and, uh, and, and they'd all be working. And it is, it, it's kind of that like imagination of like, you have all these 50,000, 50 trillion, 50 trillion cells. cells in your body and imagine turning all of them on. Well, you don't have to imagine once, once you hook it, once, yeah. once we teach you how but to I, master that. I'm just saying, starting at that like baby level where right now you maybe you're only using, you know, 500 million. It's like then then you start going tick, 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 tick. And all of a sudden you look like, you know, a plutonium dump site that I can't even stare at you. Right. You're so bright. Right. right. And that 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 comes back to the realization that everything is light. Mm -hmm. And that light is that pure light that comes down from the incredible magic maker the sun 
that is then realized into this field that we have that spectrum of light that then creates the waves of light information and energy that we have materialized as this incredible, uh, what we would call a luminous uh, blue sky that you have realized as what is outside when you walk inside. It is a light information frequency energy that is inside you that is outside of you that is a realization that is the power that comes with the wave the light that's it baby that's the truth and that's why we have an affinity with the sun the earth and the moon electric magnetic blammo the culmination of the two which is realized into electric magnetism that is the inner workings the outer workings the very infrastructure that is the field, that is everything, the core to everything, that is energy, frequency, vibration. Symbols. All is one. Letters, words, symbols. Mm -hmm. It all takes place interconnected into one thing. And so when we lean on the oracle uh, uh, bone divinations that we use in the infrastructure, that the ancient text, the ancient ritual that the the talismans that we use within Taoist uh, ritual and practice incantation um, and magic formation, all bets are off. And it's really tangible because what Jade is talking about is that aha moment, the ebb and flow, when you hit that peak, it's like as if you're walking into this sort of like um, realized image of your peak moment it gets a snapshot and you're like, I want to do it again. And this is how these incredible um, athletes reproduce this feeling that they have. They're a second to none. Mm -hmm. They are not just, they're not thinkers, they're doers. They're not thinkers, they're knowers. They're not thinkers, they're realizers of what is true. That all-knowing power, when they access it, they feel it and it's go time. It becomes realized instantaneously. They're creators, too. Oh, my goodness, they're creators. We're all creators, but they're the ones that got the heads up. They got the direct source information. They got the realization that they are the field, and they go, it's go time, baby. Mm -hmm. They're the magic that you look to, that you emulate, you want to look up to. They're the magic. They're the success story that you look at and go, I wish I was. And when you separate yourself with the human uh, uh, condition, you will never be realized because that human condition is the disorder that creates the interference, that creates the incoherence, that creates the impossibility for you to synchronize with the field, synchronize with the earth, synchronize with the universe. So realize this. Don't compartmentalize. No. Don't think no. And then everything will become manifestation everything will become magic everything will become healing when you're the maestro of those 50 trillion cells and that 0.07 millivolts of electricity that is the plutonium dunsite that is you and you are the field and you're you are realized into accessing that black hole energy that instant access to infinite abundant timeless endless limitless energy that we speak of and that's real. And so, you know, there's a physicist that I, I really enjoy that, you know, uh, resonates with my very essence that is very similar in his um, understanding of pure source of information and has for most of his life. And that's why he's so different and goes against the grain of, you know, 99% of physicists because he understands the true essence of what we speak of because he's been getting direct source information since he was a young boy. And he would look at things and go, you know what? That doesn't make any sense. Not to me. And that's the most important thing because you are the truth. You are the truth. What are you say? See, for you said, no, 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 that's not what you said. You said that your truth is the only truth you need to be concerned of, and, and that's the main truth, the only truth. Your truth is the only truth. And now you're saying you are the truth. What exactly are you talking about, Sifu? It's kind of confusing. No, I'm not, because when you are realized as the field, 
as the matrix, as the oneness, as the universe, as God, Buddha, Tao, Allah, whatever it is. That's go time. That means you are accessing everything. That entanglement is realized. That means all is one, one is all. If you move this, this moves. But it doesn't move like this. It goes beyond light speed. So it's like this. And so when you then activate the mirror neurons, which are the integration of the neurology that's within your physical body, you're able to emulate anything instantaneously. So if you create it from your th truth teller, it is realized into the field, manifestation, magic, healing, instantaneously. Which, what you believe is instantaneous, but it's actually at light speed or faster than. And so he would think about things in a different way. And when I say think, he wasn't thinking, he was knowing. But he de depicted that or described it as that. I honestly still don't believe he understands how powerful he is. I believe he's kind of like downplaying his insight and his understanding or his uh, abilities he only refers to things as i like to meditate dude you are doing way more than that my friend and you know that albert einstein was doing the same thing you just sit there and the universe gives you the information instantaneously blammo but yeah so a lot of this stuff that is splitting hairs but it comes right back to words, number symbols. And that's what's so powerful. And so when we sp spoke of that today within this podcast, I think it was kind of like really depth and informative mm -hmm. and an understanding of that, um, how powerful that is and how we use that and have for you know thousands and thousands and thousands of years, well documented, well before many other uh, systems or uh, realizations and that that we're also very paralleled but through the evolution of of chinese characters today the foundation of it was way back within taoism that interconnection within universe yellow emperor three pure ones and the the oracle bone divinations that are just rippling and echoing into every essence that have now been morphed and formed into seven or or nine variations up until this point that you now can recognize as mandarin wow and i dig it baby it's my bag <laughs> that's what makes me just get all warm and fuzzy inside you don't have to say a word i gravitate to it like a magnet oh really no idea why I would do that. <laughs> With that, I I would uh, call on my divine delectable co-host, High Priestess Jade, with any closing uh, thoughts or ideas or realizations that you would like to share with the audience. Yeah, I mean, we we went over so much with with symbols, but I I do think that it's important for each person to kind of find that thing that resonates with them and you know whether it's a picture or whether it's you know a, a physical place and and feel that really really connect with that whatever it is um if you even feel so compelled that it hits you so hard you want to get a tattoo on it amazing because symbols truly are a part of us a part of you a part of your dna a part of who you are, what, what that feeling, that supercharge that you get and um, to dismiss it at all is, is silly because it... You dismiss someone else, you dismiss yourself. Exactly. Everything has a place, mm -hmm. nothing goes to waste. No matter whether it resonates with you or not, it is here for a purpose. Understand that, know that to be true. Yes. Everything. Yeah. It's perfection, all of it. All is one, one is all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so with that said. Did we get a song today? <laughs> you betcha we do. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm feeling it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a rippling effect that is second to none, and I'm oscillating already. I'm excited. And, you know, 
where would we be without the magic of my boy? The magic of his uh, beautiful, angelic, like sweet suckle sounds that, you know, I don't know where he got them from, his connection with his divination, his higher self, but it is second to none. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just grateful that uh, he's present right here, right now to offer this magic that is his realization of his, the tones that come out of that, uh, that sound maker that, that is given to him by the Tao is second to none. And with that, we always have to go out in style. Mm -hmm. We always have to ripple and ripple out. Ooh. Can That's what I'm talking about. Virtually join our dance party. <laughs> and join the dance party that is. I mean, that just ripples into my very core. Mm. This is beyond words, beyond sensations, beyond anything that I could ever imagine in my mildest imagination. And I'm experiencing it right here, right now. And with that, I am your humble servant and Sifu, Taoist Master Sun Quinn. I'll see you in the next one, guys. <laughs>